1993, the German Touring Car Championship welcomed an Italian newcomer, Alfa Romeo. Four drivers had been chosen to wear the famous red uniform by the men from Milan. Team leader, ex-Formula One star Alessandro Nanini, a 34-year-old from Tuscany, almost lost his life in a helicopter crash in 1990 and spent months recuperating from an operation to reattach his severed right forearm. No longer with the strength to drive Formula One cars, he had become a real star in Alfa Touring cars in the Italian Championship. Second works driver Nicola Larini also drove in F1 for a Sella, Ligier, Coloni and Lamborghini, but the highlight was playing national hero for the last two races of 91, driving for Ferrari. Now he tests the Scarlet cars from Marinello, as well as racing the Scarlet cars from Milan. 46-year-old veteran Giorgio Francia brings his years of experience to the German privateer Schubel Alpha team, racing alongside Alpha's only German driver, Christian Danner. He celebrated his 35th birthday in Zolda, and Mercedes was happy to offer congratulations. But the mood in the Mercedes team was soon to change. Klaus Ludwig's car would not take part in the top 10 qualifying runoffs, and his fifth spot on the grid was disallowed as well. Let's examine the head-to-head -head battle for pole in Zolder between the Alpha of Nicola Larini and the Mercedes of Bernd Schneider, which set the tone for the beginning of the season, the newcomers immediately proving that they would be a force to be reckoned with. The low, fat, brutal Mercedes contrasts starkly with the taller, more elegant Alpha, but to start with, they look evenly matched. Lorini slowly starts to draw ahead, neatly skirting the curbs, very different indeed in style, to Schneider's brutal assault. The German soon forces the Mercedes back into contention, later commenting that this latest version of the 190 Evolution is a real beast, possessing none of the forgiving nature of the previous year's Evolution 2. But it's Larini who will turn onto the start finish straight first, seizing pole for the first race of the season by the narrowest of margins. No wonder Alfa Romeo was looking for higher things. The weather gods were kind indeed to the Italian newcomers with their four-wheel drive, providing rain at the first start. Audi's Quattro racers had to wait two years for that advantage. In the top six at the green light were three Alphas and three Mercedes. Then they were off. Poleman Larini instantly jumped into the lead, Nanini following through into second place, squeezing out Schneider. Cars with only two-wheel drive at the moment, it's just a struggle to stay on the circuit. Klaus Ludwig reacts quickly to the green, already making up places from his 10th position on the starting grid. Larini, though, unhindered by spray, is making an early getaway. Champion Ludwig has Schneider and fourth position right in his sights. Christian Danner, using all the grip of the four-wheel drive V6-powered Alpha, slips down the inside past the Mercedes of Ellen Law.
already the leaders are among the back marking traffic. Ludwig and team closing up on the two litre alpha of Gianni Gudici. Larini with Nanini close behind pulls past a privateer BMW who in the shock of seeing the red alphas blitz past almost parks the car on the outside of the circuit. A high speed red train motors on untroubled. But inside Ludwig's Mercedes, it's a very different story. Struggling with two-wheel drive and a treacherous surface, in amongst the back markers, he's having a great deal of difficulty making any headway on the Alphas. Christian Danner is seeing red as well, or should that be green? Jörg van Ommen's Diebel's Alt Zaxpeed Mercedes is really trying hard to fend him off. Ludwig makes it easy for Dana to pass. After you. The next victim is Roland Ash, distinguishable by his blue mirrors. And once more, Dana finds room a plenty to put the Alpha alongside. Out front, Nanini is pushing hard, passing Larini to take the lead. little jig of pleasure is short-lived, Nanini is out. Christian Danner flying blind through the spray finds that four-wheel drive doesn't cure every handling problem. Gidici in the two-wheel drive Alpha has even less chance of making the corner than his four-wheel drive big brothers. The Alpha team is ready for victory as Larini cruises out onto the home stretch to take the chequered flag at the end of race one. The delight for the driver and the team is equal, and a silent prayer of thanks perhaps to the rain gods. Winner Larini storms off on the second start with Dana behind, and once more Klaus Ludwig eating the spray. Francia's race is soon run with engine trouble, but Nanini in the spare car is on the move already, picking off Ellen Law in the Mercedes. Next in his sights, a brace of Mercedes. First, it's last year's champion, Klaus Ludwig, that he must deal with. He weighs him up, he cuts him up, and moves on to hunt the bottle green Zaxpeed car of Kurt Team. Last year's Zolda double winner has no chance in these conditions. Nanini pulls out, breezes past, and is already at the back end of the second Zaxpeed pilot, even before he's got rid of Team. Van Omen tries his best, but just can't stop the uncontrollable Nanini. there remains but one of the Mercedes 10 green bottles, Roland Ash, and he will soon suffer the same fate as his colleagues. In this second race, even more than the first, Alfa Romeo's all-wheel drive system is proving utterly invaluable. As Nicola Larini motors almost serenely to victory, Nanini charges up to second position. and Van Ommen, the only thing left to squabble over is who finishes exactly where in the lower orders. But shortly before the end, a hard flutter for Larini as Berlin driver Stig Amtor causes him an unnecessary moment or two of nervousness. Then it's done. Larini, the double winner at Zolder, Dana second, Nanini third.
What a start then for Alfa Romeo, but is the three-pointed star really down and out? Do the Italian stallions have what it takes to crush the might of Mercedes? Three of last year's Evolution 2 drivers started the new season with Mercedes. From the AMG team, Roland Ash. For Zach Speed, Jörg van Ommen. And Ellen Lohr, the only woman driver in the field. Back to the action at Hockenheim, the three Alphas to the four, Larini ahead, but behind them, all hell breaks loose. A small touch and Sandy Grau is off in the meadow, Ellen Law in the pit wall, Volker Streisek's Omega and Jürgen Ruck's Mustang also out of the race. The red flags are out, the race has stopped, but exactly what happened? Looking from behind, we see the touch by Sandy Grau and Ellen Law triggering it off. And then the carnage starts. Coming back round to the second start, everybody weaving to build heat up into their tyres. And once again, the Alphas hit the front. That's not smoke, that's only cement dust being kicked up by the leader. Nanini heads Larini and is already making an early break, chased by Ludwig Francia Schneider and the two Zaxby drivers side by side. With his two colleagues leading the race, Christian Danner, who started outside the top ten, feels a certain obligation to make up for lost time. The lanky German ever spectacular is really making his alpha motor. third place, Ludwig uses all the power of his ABS brakes to shorten the distance between himself and Larini in the Sachskurve. Dana, meanwhile, is held up trying to overtake Italian Achille Voltolina. Shows his feelings as he makes his way past. But the water on the windscreens of the car is going to be a big shock for Ludwig. But it wasn't water that became his problem. Without warning, Ludwig's four-cylinder engine becomes a fireball and it's instant retirement. Having gained a place at Ludwig's expense, Bernd Schneider puts another one up, chasing Giorgio Francia and passing the Alpha. Ludwig one final check and then walking away from the car. Meanwhile, Schneider takes advantage of a rare mistake by Larini, moving up into second position and Jörg van Ommen's Mercedes also profits from Alpha problems. The Pirelli tyres of Francia are going off in a big way. Now, as befits Italian opera, a three-act drama. Act one, Dana loses a left front tyre in a monumental blowout, reducing his four-wheel drive Alpha to three-wheel drive. No wonder he's having trouble grappling with the steering on his way back to the pits. Act two, on already limited grip, Pirelli tyres, Giorgio Francia does a wonderful job, only just touching Jürgen Feucht's revolving Mustang. And Act 3 in this Italian scenario, the fight for the lead. Schneider chasing hard behind Nanini, Nanini fighting him off for all he's worth, until suddenly, yes, another blowout on an Italian car, plunges him into the gravel and hands the lead to a very grateful Ben Schneider. Italians had gambled on a new tyre compound for the race and lost. Schneider wins ahead of second placed Roland Ash, Mercedes 1 2. Still, for Alpha, there's always race 2. 60,000 spectators at the short Hockenheim circuit, ready for the second start and delighted to see Mercedes in the top six places. Almost safe start, only a couple of privateers at the back jumping over each other. But in front, Roland Ash defending his second position against the green men of Zack Speed. Already, though, the red threat lurks. Larini, Francia, and Dana chasing the Diebel's Alt cars. On the start finish straight, Larini attacks Van Ommen, who only just holds him off. 
Christian Danner's camera offers a perfect opportunity to view what will become a fierce slipstreaming battle. Francia pulls out to make his move, Danner pulls out as well. And as the first Italian car goes through, so too does the second. And Van Ommen really loses out as Ellen Law blitzes through in the wake of the Italian cars. But when the lady tries to use her momentum to close on Christian Danner, he chops across her nose. Age before beauty. But soon Danner's under pressure from the next Berlin 2000 car. A helpful nudge to get him round the corner a little quicker from Klaus Ludwig. But finally Ludwig in the spare car passes fair and square without the need to give Christian a little helping hand. Nicola Larini's Alpha is faring a little better than Danner's. He moves past Kurt Team and then closes on Roland Ash. 43-year-old Ash is a joy to watch his facial expressions in the car surrendering his every thought for the cameras. Having noticed the trouble behind in his mirrors, the best he can manage is a hopeful smile as the Alpha breezes past and straight ahead of him. Christian Danner takes the hint from Lorini's progress and would be delighted to move past, but he can't get to grips with Van Ommen. Ludwig closing on Roland Ash will soon move past but frustration sets in inside Christian Danner's cockpit in his efforts to move up another position and eventually he loses concentration a trouble free race though sees Bernd Schneider collect his second Hockenheim victory later the same story a different background the start of the Eiffel Rennen at the new Nürburgring Schneider on pole but the leader is Lorini and consider the wear and tear even on this modern Grand Prix circuit on these cars with this attacking racing manner Nanini working hard using his damaged right arm changing gear and now a scene that the Alphas would rather not remember notes that all-wheel drive doesn't necessarily mean there are no problems with traction. Klaus Ludwig caught in the camera at the back of Kurt Team's Mercedes, but Ludwig is using the old 1992 spec Evolution 2 car, preferring it here at least to the brand new multi-million pound Class 1 190. Christian Danner finds that four-wheel traction also equals locking up all four wheels under braking, but at least you can get back out of those gravel traps. And the differences between the two and four-wheel drive cars is never more evident than at this chicane. The Mercedes straight across the chicane, the Alphas neatly round the sides. And the Alpha neatly into the lead as well as Larini comprehensively outbreaks the Mercedes of Schneider. On the back though, the Mercedes drivers are having their own little battle for the places, sorting out their differences with the usual gentlemanly good grace. Or not, as the case may be. Danner though has not been raised in the Mercedes driver's charm school, and he's going to make pretty certain that he can get past before he really makes the effort. Jörg van Ommen leaves the gap, Christian takes advantage. So too does Ellen Law. Mercedes drivers really do have to remember that it's not just the Alphas that they're racing, but the rest of their teammates as well. Next stop for Dana, Zaxby driver Kurt Team. Without any consideration of the results, both the works drivers lead an overtaken BMW off the straight and narrow. The gentleman to the left is Roland Ash. He wants a quiet word, if he can, with Klaus Ludwig about the jostling that he got from Ludwig at Hockenheim. But Ludwig wisely stays just out of reach. Just out of reach of Ash's teammate Schneider is Lorini. Half a second separate them at the flag. Lorini, though, of course, in front. 
victory for Alpha in race one and at the second start Alpha once more takes the lead Schneider is completely outfoxed and goes into the first corner in fifth position as Ludwig barges his way up to second Schneider's not the sort of driver to take that line down and immediately decides to go around, over or indeed through Kurt Team's car in his haste to pass, all viewed very closely by the camera. Finally though, he puts in a successful move, so too does Roland Ash just behind. Ellen Law, not a little bit ladylike, makes her presence felt at the chicane. The reason for this brutal charge? Well, she just forgot to break. Nanini would dearly have liked to take advantage there, but Ellen Law would not even dream of giving up a position without a serious fight. But after all that battering, Ellen Law finally has to call it a day. Larini and Ludwig are playing a lonely duet at the front, and Schneider, in complete desperation, tries to regain some of the ground he lost at the beginning of the race. Roland Ash takes the scenic route around the outside of Christian Danner and catches the German rather unawares. Yellow flags denotes Giorgio Francia out of the race. And in this north-south battle, southern Italian Nanini against northern Dane team, the south wins and Nanini makes the Alpha as wide as possible to retain his advantage. The reason for Christian Danner's demise, clearly evident in the smoking V6. Now the whole Schubel team was out, but at least Alpha boss Giorgio Pianto was not totally dismayed. Superstar Larini still led, at least for the moment. Nürburgring specialist Ludwig waited until he had a packed house before putting in his grandstanding move for the lead. Frustrated Schneider in the Class 1 Mercedes sees some fresh air, but not quite enough to make his way past the Alpha. Larini checking the rear view mirror, looking at the danger behind. Schneider has really closed up on Larini's car. What on earth is the matter with the Alpha? Larini waves him past and a tonic for the Mercedes fans once more. The Italian parking his Alpha with low fuel pressure. But Ludwig is unchallenged, taking the final victory for the old Evo 2 Mercedes ahead of the new Class 1 car of Schneider. And Larini, well, he gets a very slow lift back to the pits. All the retirements among the top drivers, though, mean that the privateers are getting along very nicely. Kurt Koenig, for example, on the left, and Uwe Altsen. Locking brakes on Koenig's BMW M3 betray the lack of ABS on the older cars, the work all being done by the driver. Uwe Altsen's semi-works effort enjoys slightly better status, and he was spectacular, to say the least proving at least a match for Koenig's BMW and on occasions for the works-driven Alphas as well. So in the DTM there's always somewhere for a privateer driver. A change of venue to Wunstorf, the airfield circuit, but will there be a change of leader? Well, it'll be a miracle for a start if everybody can squeeze through the first chicane without problems. But they almost do it. Only Volker Streisek and Olaf Mantai suffering any damage at all. Out front, the red, green and silver battle continues. Ludwig in fifth. Zaxby drivers Team and Van Orman in an Alfa Romeo sandwich between Larini and Danner. Nanini decides to join the dots in the red line trying to get past Ludwig. Francia out early as he was at the Nürburgring. 
Van Omen in the middle of the Alpha Sandwich battling unsuccessfully with Lurini. And Francia can do nothing about his Alpha either. Now Lurini battles team for the lead. While Ellen Law retires as well. It looks as though the Italians are warming to their task. Nanini passing team, relegating him to third. The early battles ruined Van Omen's tyres and he's into the pits to change them. Bothered by the green Zaxbids, Lurini and Nanini press on. The leader shows his determination, working to the millimetre. On this power course, Funstorf, team with his four-cylinder Mercedes, just can't hold a candle to the V6 Alphas. As they slow towards the flag, it's another alpha double, Lurini Nanini. And maybe Ellen Law, meanwhile, is looking for a four-leaf clover and some luck. Once more, threading the eye of the needle in race two. Momentarily, Van Omen's green car is on the green stuff, but none of that affects Lurini as he motors on in the lead. Ludwig, Team and Uwe Altsen are in tow. And the airport course here presents a variety of different racing lines. Everyone seems to have their favourite. Nanini, though, spends most of his race in the pits. Lurini had already come and gone and held on to his lead of the race. Although Zaxby driver Van Omen is out, colleague Team is certainly in contention. In second position behind Lorini, heading Ludwig and Danner. Suddenly a commotion among the spectators. One of the privateer BMW drivers goes off in a big way. Leaving the course and losing control, he rattles off the protective barriers, just missing a big pylon, then putting the BMW on its roof in the centre of the circuit kindly dispensing spare parts for the rest of the field. Rescued from the car and taken to hospital, he suffers only minor bruising. For the time being though, the race continues. Giorgio Francia's push forward in the Schubel reserve car comes to an unexpected halt. Another engine failure. But the red flags are out and the race has stopped. The cars coming on to park Ferme on the start-finish straight, but they can't be touched by the teams. And the reason? Well, those barriers certainly need straightening. Perfectionist Lorini takes a moment or two to shine the Alpha nicely, while the powers that be of the DTM concern themselves with when the race will restart and for how long. Meanwhile, for some reason, Lorini's pristine alpha seems to be the centre of tension on the grid. Ludwig and Schneider taking great interest in what the Italian has to say about his machinery, while team sport coordinator Klaus Steinmetz involves himself in a little bit of gentlemanly winding up of the opposition. After the one-hour repair job, the cars start once more. Lorini, instantly recognisable by the clean windscreen, retires. But almost unnoticed, Francia, in his second spare car, works his way through from the back of the grid to grab the lead. Christian Danner battling with Klaus Ludwig, and here's a recipe for disaster. Both cars locked up into the chicane. Somehow they squeeze through, though, despite Danner giving a body check to the Mercedes on the way in. But the champion returns the compliment and takes back his position. Kurt Team chases hard, second on the road to the Italian, Giorgio Francia in the Alpha. But as he crosses the line, in fact, he takes the first success of the season for Zaxbeed, winning the race on aggregate. So they move to the Nürburgring's demanding 14-mile Nordschliefer, the old ring, 
And Marini immediately and unexpectedly takes the lead from Pullman Van Ommen and the king of the ring, Klaus Ludwig. To old hands like Olaf Mante, this circuit is what racing is all about. He's an acknowledged expert of the Nordschliefer. But debutante alpha driver Larini leads the field on the racetrack that Jackie Stewart once christened the Green Hell. But the Mercedes drivers are close behind, sometimes just a bit too close. From Larini's windscreen, we see a view of the packed spectators that throng this enthralling race circuit, and the Italian is putting on a great show for them. And for us, as we watch the Italian on the approach to the carousel. Dutting a hoa, and Larini grabs air, chased by Van Ommen, Ludwig, Schneider, team and Nanini. A trouble debut though for the TC Prototypes Class 1 BMW of Armin Hanna, the only DTM car to be built outside Germany. The British built car makes a pit call that will end its race. Privateer Uwe Altsen has grabbed air at the back but not where he needs it in the tyre. As Lorini flies to victory, Ludwig steps out from behind Van Ommen slipstreams past him and then cuts back in front. Larini, Ludwig, Van Ommen going into the final lap and still everything to play for. Further behind, Christian Danner is making waves though. The German who holds a Formula 2 record on the Nordschliefer is trying to make up for lost time in spectacular fashion. Ludwig realises he'll have to give best here to the flying Italians, Larini and Alfa Romeo. No matter how good he's driving, the four-cylinder Mercedes motor simply can't compare on this power circuit. Nanini tries to draft past Schneider, but the German is having none of it. He keeps his foot to the boards and his nose in front. The experience of Olaf Mantai tells, despite his older car up against the new Class 1 190 of Ellen Law, Mantai breezes past. For the first time, Mantai is using a full work spec engine and his power keeps him ahead of Law even on the straights. But for Ludwig, Mercedes power is not enough and last year's Nürburgring double winner has no chance against the flying Nicola Larini. And the impossible happens. The Italians humble the Germans in their own backyard. Larini and Alfa Romeo taking a dominant victory through excellent driving. The start of race two, and once more Ludwig finds that Larini has escaped into the first corner. From now on, his thoughts will be concerned on keeping second position. Nanini, though, tackles Christian Danner for fifth. At the hats and back, the familiar picture re-emerges. Larini building up his lead on Ludwig. One hundred thousand spectators pack the circuit and are treated to a virtuoso demonstration by Alpha and Larini. Countless laps of the circuit in a higher car have obviously paid dividends. Larini has now been entitled with the name the new Nuvolari by enthusiastic Alpha Sport Chief Giorgio Pianta. With this sensational performance, it's only June, but Larini is already looking towards the title victory. Larini and chasing hard Ludwig, Van Ormen, Schneider, Nanini, Dana, Francia. Ash, Team, Mante and Lohr. Alpha drivers Nanini and Dana seem to think that two heads work better than one and they gang up on Schneider's Mercedes. Seems to me their plan might have some sense in it. A 
lonely second place for Klaus Ludwig. He's almost lost sight entirely of the leader, Lurini. But at least he feels safe. Van Ommen, so he believes, should be sheltering him against Alpha duo Dana and Nanini. Wrong. Dana, cleverly using all his Formula 2 experience, drafts up behind the green Zack Speed car and uses the slingshot and momentum to overtake both cars. Worse than that, Ludwig now finds himself behind even Van Ommen in fourth position. But not for long. Ludwig battles hard. He gets his position back, up to third he goes. And Van Ommen finds himself sucked in by Nanini. But it's a close run thing for Nanini. Even closer for several hundred spectators as Ellen Law's Mercedes vaults the barriers and only just stops short of the enclosure. Luckily, no one, driver included, was hurt. But not everybody makes quite such a big mess of their car. Nothing, it seems, can now stop Lorini. A peerless drive and faultless performance from the Alfa Romeo 155 V6 all add up to mean that this is not a green hell, but a red miracle. And towards the end, Lorini backs off sufficiently to allow Dana to close up, making a very photogenic 1-2 for Alpha. Two weeks later, it's the DTM's Mini Monaco, the Norris Ring, and the Lorini threat appears to be firmly under wraps at the start, the two Zack Speed cars leading the field away. Problems in qualifying meant that Lorini dropped out of the top 10 runoffs and only started 14th, but he won't be content with that for long. As the green cars are chased by Dana, Klaus Ludwig with the damaged front end is trying hard to get past teammate Ellen Lohr. He's already had a busy first lap and continues in the same vein. Bernd Schneider wisely stays just out of harm's way. Well, if that was an example of a perfect overtaking manoeuvre, here is how it's not done. Georg Sevich, the privateer BMW number 21, completely messes up a passing manoeuvre, and he and Mark Gindorf pay the penalty.
The Grundig Kurve is a haven for the late breakers, and thanks to their ABS, that allows all the Mercedes to stay well ahead of the Alphas. But their incredible acceleration from the slow corner and the V6 power brings them right back into contention, at least until they need the brakes next. Still in front, the Zaxby duo, Team and Van Ommen. Even ABS is no guarantee to outbreaking somebody successfully, as Roland Ash proves. Still nicely held all the same. Nanini retires with engine problems. Old friend Lorini, though, makes up a position, squeezing past Ellen Law. Now she comes under the attention of Roland Ash. Under braking, he knocks politely to try and find a way through. But she's ignoring him. This time, Ash decides to batter the door down. Ellen Law, however, is not one to give up, and Ash really has to work for the position. Ludwig is out with axle trouble, the mechanics attending to the front end of the car ready for race two as well, and Schneider now comes into the pits, also with a damaged car. Lorini is up from 14th to 4th. Kurt Team loses his lead, outbreaking himself, but manages to get the car back into the race. Team tactics are all important in the German Touring Car Championship, something that Christian Danner knows very well. So when the boss gets on the radio and says, let Lorini through, you let Lorini through. And if he messes up the corner, well, he messes up the corner. Christian, of course, being a perfect gentleman, leaves the door open a second time. And this time, the grateful Italian keeps the car on the road. Lorini up to second after Team falls back with his braking problems. Only Van Ommen between him and victory. The crowd are willing on the Mercedes, but will that be enough? The Italian shoots from the hip, slipstreaming the car all the way down the straight, desperately trying to find a way of outbreaking the ABS-powered Mercedes. Somehow, he does it, finds a way through, and the four-wheel drive and the V6 carry him out of harm's way. On the penultimate lap, Van Ormen has Danner to deal with, but makes him go round the long way. The Mercedes driver hangs on to second. Lorini, the alpha hero, of course, takes victory in front of an 80,000 crowd. Dropping in on big brother Alessandro is his pop star sister Gianna Nanini. He explains to her what difficulties he's having on this tight city course. As he says, it's tough out there on the streets. Espresso and cigarette lover Alessandro trains hard with Nicola Lorini. Together they figure we'll make each other stronger. But after all, his life philosophy is, you have to have some fun. In Nuremberg, Nanini tested the sequential gear change of the Alpha for the first time. Giorgio Pianta shows us how it works. One knob to change up. One knob to change down, just a quick push, and the electronic gearbox does the rest. Child's play, as Nanini shows in this top qualifying runoff, and only as long as it works. In the first race at the Norris Ring, Nanini was sidelined by a failure in the new machinery. But what about the second? Well, on the second start on the 1.2 kilometer street course, the sort of traffic jam that's building up behind Nicola Lorini might easily be mistaken for a downtown Munich rush hour. Jörg van Ormen, though, at least has learnt something from race one about keeping alphas behind him. 
Dana and Francia will have to watch him for a while, but Nanini is out of the hunt. Spare car, spare gearbox, same problem. Kurt's team has arrived at a marshal's post and gone no further, but at least he has a good view of colleague Van Ommen holding off the Alphas. This is turning into something of a race of attrition for Mercedes. Schneider's car retires into the pits, but teammate Roland Ash at least is still going, pushing past privateer Uwe Artsen. Ludwig in the spare proves that no matter what his age, he's still got the spirit of a young driver charging his way up the field. Dana manages to put the green car between the two red ones, and Francia gets past Van Ommen as well. But then the 46 year old Italian takes the opportunity to steal the show, blasting past his Bavarian counterpart. Dana couldn't believe it. Dana's concentration seems to be momentarily broken by Francia's move, allowing Roland Ash to close right up behind him. The battle continues over several laps. As Lorini heads for another victory, Ash, behind the ever wider Christian Dana Alpha, loses his cool. He sees a gap, but suddenly it's not there anymore, and he pushes the annoying Dana out of his way. very unlike the normally peaceful Roland Ash. But this seems to be a growing trait among Mercedes drivers. Klaus Ludwig tries it on Giorgio Francia. Not quite so deliberate, not quite so successful though either. This time he does it properly. A good thump and Francia's out of the race. Ludwig though only moves up to fourth position and that's not really good enough because Larini is on his way to his second victory closing into second position in the championship. Clearly here, the glory belong once more to Lorini and Alfa Romeo. Mid-July and the elite drivers of the DTM are arriving for a visitor's race. No points involved in this non-championship race and the atmosphere is uh, relaxed and informal. No problem. Hi fans, says Jörg Van Ommen. Everything okay? Shay Bernd Schneider as well. Hello mum, he says. Klaus Ludwig looking for some accreditation on TV commentator John Watson. But eventually, after all the messing around, the drivers settle down for some serious business. And from the green lights, the easygoing natures all disappear out the window and battle is joined. Superstar Lorini disappears off into the grass in his Alpha and drops back in way down the field behind Uwe Altsen, who has absolutely no intention of easing up a little to allow the Alpha to come through. Meanwhile, battle up ahead between Kurt Team and Alessandro Nanini, and the Alpha driver going very well in this early running, though not for long. Once more, the sequential gear change will prove to be his downfall. Lorini now recovered from his earlier grassy moment is showing strongly as well, breezing past Van Ommen. Well, there may be no championship points on offer, but there's certainly no lack of action. Lorini chases Ludwig, taking to the grass once again. Seems to have a habit of finding the greenery on this Donington circuit, although he manages to recover. Moving past Ludwig, and then past Ash, taking third position. Not bad for as entertaining a race as he's been having. Christian Danna, meanwhile, sees the chequered flag and celebrates his first DTM victory, hoping to repeat the trick in the second race. But Schneider has other ideas. So too does Lorini. Ludwig has an engine failure that drops him out of contention. And Schneider has brake problems. So this time the positions are reversed. Lorini takes victory. Christian Danner takes second.
From Donington now to Deep Holtz, from race circuits to aerodrome, from non-championship to serious running. But for Larini, the first corner looks pretty much the same. Grassy. Six Mercedes works cars fill the front six places. The men from Stuttgart in determined mood and with strength in depth. Nanini, with a functioning sequential gearbox, feels his way up the field. Meanwhile, Larini's in trouble again. Armin Harner and the Linda M3 getting in his way as he goes through the chicane, and he's unable to avoid them. The breakaway group of Mercedes rushes on untroubled. Nanini copies his teammate, and once more, Hana is the subject of some unwarranted alpha intrusions. The M3 kicks off a back wheel. Nanini digs his way through the meadow, but both cars are out of the race. Stung, perhaps, by the criticism of Dana after the Norris ring, a very gentlemanly approach under ferocious braking into the chicane by Roland Ash. The enormous stopping power of these DTM cars is difficult enough to harness, especially when you're trying to find your way past someone, and clean passing is not always possible. Giudici's two-litre Alpha, the sole interloper here in this Mercedes German horde, but he's a lap behind. Francia in the 155 V6, however, is in contention with the leaders and the last of the works alphas to be there. The old man of the Italian squad uses all his guile and a little bit of treachery as well to find his way past. In car again with Roland Ash, and you can see that he's thinking about something. This is what it is, breezing past Kurt team. For team, it seems everything will pass. First Roland Ash, then Bernd Schneider. Team's Michelin tyres don't have the grip anymore, and he is dropping back down the order. No such problems, though, for Bridgestone runner Klaus Ludwig. Past he goes. At Donington, Christian Danner was at the head of the field. Here he finds himself lost behind the works Mercedes and just ahead of the privateers. A lonely race. Schneider grabs second position. and holds Ludwig off on the way to the finish. A great race for Mercedes. Ash wins from Schneider, Ludwig, Team and Lohr. The top five, all Stuttgart cars. No wonder the team looks happy. And Ludwig, the old man of the team, congratulates the young boy Schneider and his wife Nicola. Without wishing to take anything away from Schneider's undoubted ability behind the wheel, the young man from the Saarland in the south of Germany took pole up north with a very special Mercedes 190, featuring electronically controlled, actively driven body and start-slip adjustment. ABC and ASR they're called, but to you and me, we're talking active ride and traction control. OK, so the Class 1 190 racer doesn't exactly look like a full-spec Mercedes limousine, but a lot of the running gear underneath shares a great deal in common with the most luxurious of the Stuttgart output. Well, it all seemed to work very nicely in the first race, but will ABC and ASR help to keep Bert Schneider out ahead in the second race? This time the Alphas look a lot closer at the start than previously. Perhaps Mercedes have got something to worry about. In front, Ash and Ludwig lead. The two 43-year-olds battle furiously. Ludwig has the better line coming down to the chicane and slips ahead. But Ash is not a man to give up a position that easily. And Ludwig had best look to his mirrors rather than what's going on ahead of him. Bye-bye, Klaus. 
team has passed Schneider, ABC, ASR or not. And Francia is closing in on Ellen Law. Larini lurking purposefully, second up in the Alpha Brigade. Schneider tests his traction control system by running it onto the grass. Meanwhile, Ellen Law is now presented with the prospect of keeping both the Alphas behind her. She doesn't expect any quarter, and none is given. But whatever, Larini's tactics serve him far worse than they serve Law. Ludwig passes Ash again, and this time he's done the job properly. Ash has no reply. The two-litre alpha of Cadici overcooks it at the chicane and rejoins in the path of Christian Danner. A spectacular looking shunt, both the cars severely damaged, but luckily both the drivers walk away. Danner completely unscathed, Cadici just a small headache. Ash is having gearbox problems, crunching the lever home, and it gives up, waving the alphas past. Once again, disaster lurks at the chicane, this time for leader Ludwig as he finds wayward Opel driver Hermann Roth right on the apex. The Mercedes survives, but Larini is close enough to use all the alpha horsepower to blast past into the lead. One lap later, Francia will also pass Ludwig, but that will be negated as the red flags come out as a sudden thunderstorm sweeps the track. Positions are given a lap before the passing manoeuvre. In the torrential downpour, the drivers crawl back for safety and the spectators, jubilant at an afternoon's excitement, head for home. Man Jörg van Ommen survives about as far as the first corner at the hands of Nicola Larini of the street circuit at Singen. The narrow confines of the southern German spa town are always very, very restricting for the DTM cars. And look at that, pole position man out of the race already. Larini leads from Schneider, Team, Nanini and Francia. The Italian cars making their way up the order. Privateer Harold Becker taking over for the absent Armin Hanna stacks the Class 1 Linda BMW M3 in a big way. The perpetual Mercedes battle between Ellen Law ahead and Klaus Ludwig behind. And momentarily losing his way, exit stage right, Roland Ash. Negotiating the high barriers that cut down the visibility, once more he finds the right track. And this time Ellen Law leaves the door open for Klaus Ludwig to come past. He is, after all, a championship hopeful. The street circuit at Singen is the one that Alessandro Nanini has always feared. The phenomenal amount of gear change is really punishing that damaged right arm, and he's dropping off the pace. Not so Larini, though. He easily passes Roland Ash. Once more, being a gentleman and allowing room for the cars to come through. Which is more than you can say for some of the drivers on the Singen circuit. Alan Law, understandably, was not happy. The Lorini-Schneidel battle continues around the penultimate lap without any problems. Despite their proximity to the wall on occasions, both drivers motor on team, though, is not so lucky. Following on from his double successes at Deep Holtz, Larini takes victory in the first race. 
motoring ever more steadily towards that elusive first championship victory for himself and Alpha, now tantalizingly close. The fans' loyalties are divided between Stuttgart and Milan, but either way, the drivers are certain of plenty of support for the second leg. Schneider, wise through bitter experience, gives up any struggle on the way to the first turn, allowing Lorini to use the inside line to his full advantage. Nanini pushing Ludwig, powerless to resist, into the barriers. No such breakdown in the communications between Kurt Team and Giorgio Francia. They both realise that one of them has to go through, otherwise neither of them will. But frantic waving from Team means please don't hit my car even though it's slowing dramatically in front of you. Team's Mercedes has a problem. Nanini is now resorting to taking almost any line to try and wrestle the Alpha round the track. The battle for the lead reaches fever pitch. Lorini holds Schneider off on the straights, but the ABS system on the Mercedes helps the German to close under braking. Once more, he lunges down. This time, he emerges from the corner ahead. Clattering off the barriers, he's got a slower BMW ahead of him, and the advantage appears to be lost. Schneider, not a man to give up, will try again, forcing the Mercedes ahead once more under braking. Once more, the three-pointed star flags wave. This time, it's Schneider for victory. Alan Lohr pushes innocent privateer Uwe Altson out of the way down at the sharp Spitzkurve. But then she herself becomes victim to a little bit of argy-bargy. Lorini somehow gets the feeling that he's not alone. But he doesn't worry too much. Francia should be able to hold up the rest of the cars behind him. In fact, he's having no trouble at all from Mercedes driver Kurt Team. What on earth can be his problem? Well, simply, but difficultly enough to handle on this circuit, his ABS has gone away. And as the Alphas breeze past him, so too has Team's enthusiasm for this electronic braking control. Team struggles on with the car. Another locked wheel showing the problems he's having under braking, absolutely destroying the front discs and calipers with the effort of slowing the Mercedes. But no such problems for the active Bernd Schneider car, taking the first win for a Mercedes with active body control. But there's joy for Alfa Romeo as well. Lorini now one point from the championship. It seems as if Germany's spiritual capital, Berlin, is throwing in a helping hand for the Alphas as well. The Arbus street race starts with rain. The Berliners demonstrate 100% support for DTM, 30,000 fans in the main grandstand, watching one Alpha hit the front of the field. But it's not the championship hopeful. Nanini is pulling the field along at the front of a very wet race. In the middle of the field, two strapping Berliners come to grief. Stig Amtor gets a shove and puts himself in the way of fellow Berliner Gert Ruch. Neither of them could have reckoned on this sort of a home race. Roland Ash uses the outer lane of the Nordkurve to go past Kurt Team. 
whereas experienced driver Olaf Mante invites newcomer Sandy Grau to a DTM pas de deux. The race is run on closed off sections of Berlin's Autobahn system, the long straights marvellous for high horsepower slipstreaming games, and the tight corners really making the Mercedes come into their own with the effective ABS brakes. Out of the corners, Danner can play against Schneider, even on a drying track, courtesy of his four-wheel drive and V6 power. The better traction helping him ahead. Ludwig, taking the advice of sport chief Norbert Haug, brings his car into the pits first for the change to slicks. Narini refuses to be drawn into risks on the autobahn. Team, still here with rain tyres, stays ahead rather than make Larini take a chance. Danner pulls in for a pit stop in the narrow, crowded pit lane. Quick reactions by the marshals and the teams alike are necessary if there is to be a safe pit change. The Italy-Denmark race continues, this time in Larini's favour, and team realises he's really missed the boat when it comes to tyre changes. One of his wets explodes. The frustration of sitting in the middle of the race in the pits gets to Larini, but at least he's got four wheels on his car, more than one of the privateer Fords can boast. Is this form of engine cooling really allowed in the regulations? Danner tails Schneider. Roland Ash is leading, though, out at Arvos. Ludwig is second, and Nicola Larini is the new German touring car champion. The now defeated champion, Ludwig, gets ready for the second Berlin race. He'd have loved to have won here, but there's still the chance to become the championship runner-up. Roland Ash, however, is also interested in winning this race. After the traffic jam at the South Hairpin the first time, Christian Danner keeps a wise gap between himself and the leaders and profits when they outbreak each other off the circuit. Nanini falls foul once more to gearbox gremlins and Danner, once more behind Ludwig, shows determination but at least some consideration for Stig Amtor in his spare car. Royal Mercedes colleague Jörg van Om decides that he'll hold up Christian Danner's Alpha as much as possible to guard Ludwig's back door. But down to the south hairpin, it all goes wrong for Danner and then for Ludwig. Danner locks up, Ludwig lucks out. All four wheels stationary on the Alpha, no way of controlling it and no way of avoiding it either for Klaus Ludwig. Leader Ash, though, profits because Jörg van Ommen has slipped ahead of the Alpha once more and is determined to give the Mercedes driver ahead of him some clear space by holding up Dana as much as he can. Finally, though, the power of the Alpha tells, and Danner makes his way ahead. Now Van Ommen has become Lurini's problem. The normally fair-minded Van Ommen is obviously out to make things as difficult for the Alpha drivers as possibly he can. Once more, he makes his Mercedes as wide as possible when the red car fills his mirrors. But this time, Larini finds the power, just like Danner, to breeze past. For his colleague team, though, Van Ommen is every bit the gentleman he always was. Quiet word from the team leaders to Christian Danner. Second is good, but what about a victory? The Bavarian driver uses all his skill, all his guile, and all the Alpha's power, but to no avail. Ash is the double winner in Berlin. 
and Sport Chief Norbert Howe goes overboard with delight. After the presentation, Ash says they could have played the national anthem a little bit longer for me. Once out of the cars, all the good-natured sportsmanship returns and Larini is congratulated with a cake and the best wishes of the Mercedes team. With the German title firmly under his belt, Larini is now also a national hero in his home country of Italy. In the workshops previously used in the 60s by the famous Arbart Tuning Company, Alpha Corsa builds the successful Deutsche Touringwagen Meisterschaft 155s. The row of Milan snakes stuck to the door of Larini's car are all dedicated to a victory. The green one was for Donington, the non-championship race. Giorgio Pian to the team boss, confers with his driver, the new champion, Larini, and his team chief, Cerici. Larini, with his highly involved technical input, has been vital to the whole process, and vital to him has been his fitness. In the hills around his Tuscan home, Larini concentrates on his strength, biking for body fitness, and spending time at his home with wife Barbara. Racing drivers, it seems, never grow up. No wonder two-year-old son Gabriele is on such a par with his dad. A quiet meal at his favourite restaurant for Nicola Larini. The sun is really only shining for Larini when he's at home, his second home at Marinello. For two years, the 29-year-old Formula One driver tested for Ferrari and in 1991 managed to get two races in for the Scarlet team. Never far from engines, Larini is also a keen yachtsman and a keen fisherman, though with bait like this, I don't know what he hopes to catch. Hockenheim sees a new DTM arrival, the Opel Calibra 4x4 with its V6 power. Of course, the new act immediately is the centre of attention, run as it is by the highly experienced team chief Reinhold Joost. New boy Keki Rosberg looks worried by the potential of the car. Will the Opel prove to be on the track as efficient as it is good looking? Opel tentatively requests that this be treated merely as a test run for the car. They only want to see where they stand in comparison with the other Class 1 cars. That may be the official case, but Rosberg and co-driver Manuel Reuter will undoubtedly be out to try and stamp their mark with this brand new car. All-wheel drive, ABS and the V6, a handsome slippery body shape. Perhaps it might not be such a bad package after all. Rosberg and colleague Manuel Reuter ready for the off. The red lights turn to green and the final round of the championship sees Kurt Team head off into the lead for Mercedes. This trio points directly into the future. Class 1 BMW behind Class 1 Opel and Class 1 Mercedes. The Ost curve once more producing great spectacular viewing. Nanini raising the dust early, a symbol of his attacking attitude to this final race. On the long straight here at Hockenheim, when the drivers spend more than 75% of the lap with their right foot buried on the throttle, the power of the Alphas is a definite advantage. Team is hard pressed to defend his early lead. Privateer Armin Bernhardt is hard pressed indeed, so too is his car. It's written off, but the driver is completely unharmed.
Marini passes Ludwig, the man with whom he traded championship places. And Reuter 2 is dropped by the power of the Alpha V6 and by the four-cylinder Mercedes. Courtine proves that despite the power deficit, he and the Mercedes are still a force to be reckoned with. But technical problems rule out any hope of a high finish for Schneider. In both the fast corners and the chicanes, the slippery newcomers from Opel are handling extremely well. Superb aerodynamics sticks the cars to the road, cornering as if they're on rails. Hockenheim darling Ellen Law gives a good show for the 50,000 spectators. Dicing furiously with Jörg van Ommen in the Saxkurve as they come through the stadium section. Nanini now leads. Lohr's crew enthusiastically encouraging their Ellie along. Rosberg's hard at work in the Calibra, but the 1982 Formula One world champion has to follow his teammate Manuel Reuter. Team is in trouble meanwhile. Nanini and now Francia have just slipped past him. Only Rosberg's lightning reflexes avoid an embarrassing 1-2 collision for the Opals as Reuter's car falls subject to electronic problems. In front, the Italian and German battle continues. Van Ommen occasionally ahead, Nanini occasionally fighting back. Ellen Law's Mercedes has lost its get up and go. But not so Larini and not so Van Ommen. As Nanini sneaks ahead, Van Ommen soon finds himself with Christian Danner to deal with. Danner here puts himself into an unacceptable situation. There's nowhere for him to go when he breaks too late. And nothing Van Ommen can do about it. Nanini now seems to be firmly on the way to his first win of the season. But Larini, who started 16th because of his mechanical problems, is in a foul mood. Behind these three drivers, he can only be fourth at best. Bravo, Sandro, the board says. The Alpha team celebrating their driver's victory. And his girlfriend looks pleased as well. Nanini leads the field into the very final race of the 1993 DTM season. Three Alphas together at the front. As the red wedge heads off into the countryside, Klaus Ludwig once more demonstrates the car control that's kept him at the top of this sport for so long. The Alpha team keeps a worried eye on the battle between young hero Larini and oldie Francia. The 29-year-old, though, pulls safely ahead of the 46-year-old teammate through the Saxe Corva. As in all motor racing, though, age and treachery do have their advantages. Rosberg just about pulls past youngster Altsen and then shows the young, wild, quick driver that he is also available for some wild, quick antics. The AMG team disappointedly watch how the red cars are keeping their three-pointed stars well in the background. And suddenly a silver car appears, not out of a dust storm, but in a smoke storm. Who could that be? Well, Van Ommen and Schneider are still part of the party. So it's for Ludwig that the season is finally over.
Nearly over for Schneider as well, who drifts wide across the center of the Ostkurve chicane. But using some rally cross experience, gets it back onto the tarmac. The new champion is happy with second, sitting comfortably behind Nanini. Delighted that his friend and teammate is on course for a second victory. Rosberg drops out of fifth position with electronic problems. Opel's test run is at an end. Ash has improved greatly the aerodynamics of his car by folding the mirrors up against the windscreen. Team now, of course, has no chance. Larini slows and then drops out. Without fuel pressure, there is nothing for him to do but pull over. Undoubtedly a disappointing end to an otherwise immaculate season. Heading towards victory in the hot autumn sunshine though, for the second time at Hockenheim, Alessandro Nanini and a jubilant Roland Ash takes second overall in the championship with another fine race. So, the Alfisti get to celebrate for the final time, for this year at least.